Hello friend, this is Sanjay Kumar, founder of Selectors Up. In this tutorial, I will explain you end to end each and everything like how to install Selectors Up Pro, how to get started with this, what all features are there, how you can make the best use of it to save a lot of time while writing the automation script, while learning the XBAS, Selectors, about the DOM, Shadow DOM, iframe, etc. and how this is going to help you in day to day life. So let's see. So very first thing, like let's see how uh, how you can install it. So it's very simple. You just have to go to selectorsub.com, and here you will see the Selector Sub Pro. Click on Install button. It will take you to the Selector Sub Pro homepage. Here you will see all, each and everything, all the details you will find if you want to learn more about it. And then very first thing, like it's very simple to start with this Selector Sub Pro. First thing we have to do, click to add to Pro version to the browser. Then you have to pin it to toolbar so that you can see it here. Then you have like if you want to compare it with the free version, then you can compare here. As well as then from there you can take a free trial or you can directly take the business plan if you are taking it for company. So here you can compare with all the features and everything with the pro version and free version. And you can take the like if you are going individual plan with the individual plan so you can take it like if you are from India from here you can uh, take this use this link or if outside India you use this link if you are taking it for company like you are uh, you want to take a business plan for let's say five member team or ten member team or 15 20 whatever then you can choose a plan from here we will always recommend that you go for the business plan rather than like individual plan or if you are an individual then encourage your company to take the business plan so that like uh, you will not have to pay it from your pocket and your whole team can get benefited out of it so for an example let's say uh, we are taking you want to take a free trial free trial is available in the individual one so uh, so what we will do like we will take this business plan before that let's let us install the selectors of pro in our browser so let's go back to this page and here click to add pro version to your browser click on this it will open the chrome store from there you can install it currently you can install this uh, pro version in all the uh, chromium based browser like edge browser you can install chrome you can install and whichever browser which support chromium there you can install it so let's add to chrome so this got successfully added here now to uh, get into the like uh, here on the toolbar you will have to click and pin it to toolbar we will always recommend that you restart the browser after adding it to the browser or uh, like open a new tab where you want to use it okay so now uh, let's say we open this selectorsub.com or whichever website you can open that that's okay so now we have installed selectorsub pro if you will open like uh, here you can click and see the instruction and other, other stuff so now let's open selector sub pro in dev tools and see how it opens so you if you have used the free version you know where you can find it so right click and inspect anywhere that means click on inspect anywhere on the page you can just right click and click on inspect this way dev tools will open here on the left side you will see the elements tab on the right side selector sub will be the last selector sub pro will be the last step here so click on this and this is how it will open so here you will see that it is asking you to enter the email id and password and then click on login so for this to get these credential you will have to take the subscription so let us take the subscription now so here you can take any of the plan whichever you want so let's say uh, suppose you are uh, in india and you want to take this plan or if you are outside india and you want to take a free trial so click on this and then you can choose any of the plan you see that it's very cheap almost free just one dollar per month and if you want to go quarterly or monthly that's up to you so you can check uh, take any of these plan and if you are for company you can uh, choose from the business plan so suppose we take an annual plan from here so take select this as soon as you will click it it will take you to the stripe secured uh, subscription page so from here you can uh, take the business plan uh, sorry from here you can take the uh, individual plan yearly this one is and you will get a seven days free trial if you don't want to continue after seven days or before seven days you want to 
uh, cancel you can uh, do it at your end itself by yourself i will show you how you can do this so once you will take this subscription plan so let's say we have taken subscription plan after that uh, you will get these credential and you will get an email with the credential once you take the subscription plan so uh, like this you will get uh, mailed in your inbox whichever email id you will use in your uh, <clears throat> while taking the subscription whichever email id you will use you will get this email in the inbox of that email make sure uh, if you didn't get a uh, email within a minute in your inbox then check out your promotion folder as well as uh, check out uh, check your spam folder also there are very very rare cases like hardly one percent cases or uh, uh, could be the one percent chances there that it will go inside the promotion or spam folder otherwise you will always get in uh, inbox so now suppose you got the now we have the credential so we can enter those credential here and this is just one time process guys you will never ever have to do it again so only once this login is required and uh, so yeah done so we are all set now and this is how selector sub pro will open and this is how you will see the uh, window let me take this practice page where we will see all the scenarios and everything so that's how you will see this uh, selector sub pro window here and now i will explain you each and every feature uh, in detail so that you will have the overview and everything uh, well understand it so here uh, you see that uh, now if we close this and open selector sub again right click click on inspect open selector sub pro here so you will see that you need not to like login again that was just only one time process so we are all set let me close all these windows here so we are all set and now we will learn about how to make the best use of selectors of pro while writing the uh, automation script and uh, while learning the learning about selectors and everything so uh, very first thing installation and setup we have seen now we will see how this ui looks like and what all elements are there and everything so let me just close this yeah so here as soon as we open selector sub pro you will see that this is how it will look it will show you all possible selectors here for the currently inspected element let me zoom in a little bit i hope this is visible so as soon as you open here you will see all possible selectors are generated you can see their occurrences and here are the values like for this element what is css selector this is a css selector what is xpath this is the x relative xpath index based xpath this is the basically name here for this particular element then uh, this is jquery jspath id like if id will be whatever selectors will be possible for that element it will show you along with their occurrences here so like for this class name there are two matching nodes for this input there are 31 for absolute xpath one so all these things are here if you have to copy any of these values so either you click on this copy button or anywhere here in this place you click click like for this relative xpath you click on copy icon or you can click here as well so this is a shortcut here so you can copy this value and you can paste it anywhere you want in your editor if you want to add it or something in this xpath you or in any of the value you want to change something you click on this edit button it will automatically copy and paste the value here like you see if you click on this it will copy paste here so here you can like if you want to change anything or if you want to edit or something you want to do that you can do it here so this way you would be able to uh, like uh, copy these values and edit these values whatever you are seeing here so and then these are uh, each and every these are the features here in multiple features are there these all these buttons have a very good use case very good features here like and on the right side also there are a couple of icons and there in the footer lots of things are there so i will explain each and everything so this is how it looks when you open selectors hub pro and that's how these things are visible here okay now how to generate xpath and css selectors and other selectors in selectors hub so it's very simple you just have to inspect the element like you can inspect any element like suppose we want to generate xpath for this element and selector for this element you just have to inspect this element and you will get all possible selectors here you see 
you just inspect any element here and you get the selectors so one way is that you can inspect from here another way right click and click on inspect and then uh, you can inspect that element or like uh, you just right uh, here you can click on this dom node as well to inspect that element and it will generate okay so this is how to uh, like how you can generate selectors just inspect that element and you would be able to generate then uh, here let me uh, give you another best feature this selector sub inspector we will come come back later to this one selector sub inspector so you see that here we have this selector sub inspector here this inspector so in place of this one to use this inspector because when you have to inspect any element you have to click on this and then you inspect element and now suppose if you have to inspect another element like let's say you have to inspect this user email uh, label so you have to again click on this button and then you have to inspect right so this is like uh, uh, this is basically like again and again you have to click on this element while here in selectors hub you see that we have this inspector button you click on this once and now you see that whichever element you want to inspect you can inspect now you will not have to click on inspect button again and again so this is how this selectors hub inspector is much useful and i will we will always recommend that you use this so that like whichever element you want to inspect you keep on inspecting again uh, and this inspector will not get disabled and you will not have to select that again and again and whenever you want to disable just right click and then it will get disabled again if you want to enable it click here and then you start inspecting so this way you can use make best use of this selector sub inspector and save a lot of time you need not to click again and again on this and whenever you want disable right click okay cool so this is how you can generate the normal xpar css selectors and all other element and you can make a use of selectors of inspector here here you can generate the access based relative xpath as well to other element like suppose you want to automatically generate the access based xpath so there is a button access based xpath this one here and now you see that one more thing guys remember in selectors hub inspector if you want to use this currently it is not supporting for uh, for server dom and iframe we will add that support in future uh, very soon but yes currently when i'm uh, creating this uh, video with version 0.0.6 .0 that time this is not working with shadow for shadow dom and iframe but don't worry in rest of the cases it is working like charm soon we will add that support okay cool so now i'm showing you the feature that how you can generate the x path relative to other element using selectors hub okay so it's very simple just click on like you are on this window you just click on this access button and now it is asking you to inspect parent first and then inspect shell so you see that you select this selectors of inspector and how it is easy now let's say we want to generate xpath for courses with respect to products so first click on this products and then inspect this courses you see that it has generated now suppose you want generate for password with respect to this password uh, label first click uh, like inspect this password to inspect just you have to click and to inspect this you have to click here because selectors of inspector is on and you see that it has generated for password field with respect to password label to copy this value again you can click on this anywhere here like in this copy icon sorry here you can click on this copy icon value got copied if you want to edit anything in this click on this edit button and there you can uh, like change anything in this x path if you want otherwise that's fine and whenever like you see that it has this value got changed here like now it is asking you to uh, inspect the child not the parent so if uh, if ever it happened like by mistake you have click on something and you wanted to change the parent first so how to reset these values so that you can inspect parent first and then child so in that case you just click on this button here and click back again so the value will be reset and now you can inspect the parent and then child so that's how you can generate the relative x path relate i mean access based x path re relative to other element very simple and very good feature huge time saver 
cool now let's see how to uh, like how you can write your own xpath in css selectors so we will start from here now and it will explain one by one all these features and everything so how you can like you you must have heard that you can write your own xpath in css selector within few seconds in selectors of pro so how that is possible so you see that you just start typing here in selectors of window input box like you see that as soon as you start typing you start getting auto suggest in the drop down we will start typing and you see just start pressing the down arrow key and you will see that it will start auto filling the values and it shows that with this uh, permutation combinations of attribute and attribute value there is one element matching node with this permutation combination there is one matching node so you can select any of these value press down arrow key and you will see the value is automatically filling here so you need not to even click or select something like that you just press down arrow and play around so this is very uh, like kind of like a smart editor which helps a lot uh, to save a lot of time for you you need not to copy value from here or you need not to type each and everything you just type one thing one word or one uh, syntax of xpath and then it will start automatic automatically suggesting like let's say you see that's all like if you want to add more conditions here you type open parenthesis uh, open square bracket and you can select this here so this is how you can write your xpath very quickly if you want to write css selector so as soon as you start typing like let's say you want to write css selector based on id so id css selector with id we write with hash so you just type hash here and you see if you want to write with c uh, with class so uh, what you have to do you just type here like uh, let's say for this one you want to write with class so you just type here dot and this will uh, this will give you the value here so this way you can uh, like uh, write xpath and css selector very quickly and very fine and it is showing four matching nodes so you can make this unique and other stuff that you can do so yes and you can like if you want to add and or condition or uh, like access based following sibling parent and everything that you can do it here so let me just close it once and show you guys again like let's say you have open uh or suppose like again you we will open this page because uh, we have been doing it for quite some time in same page let me try it again and show you that when like let's say next time when you open and how you will feel and see things so remember that you need not to log in again ever just that was one time process so that is not ever going to uh, like you will not have to waste time basically okay so suppose we want to write an x path for this input uh, email field with respect to this label so here you type input and then we have written let's say for this one and now we want to write xpath for this input field with respect to this user email so here you see that this user email is uh, preceding sibling for this input okay so here you suppose type pre preceding sibling so this label and you see that we got the x path for label with respect to this input box similarly if you uh, want x path for this input with respect to this user email so what we can do first we can write the x path first we will have to write the x path for label then we will have to write for this input so here we can write this following sibling and then uh, this input is user id so select this and here you go so you we have written x path for input this label sorry input box with respect to this label now there will be one question that how uh, like what auto suggest it is giving like you see that when i'm typing here we, i'm getting these values so how we will get these values here so these values will always be with respect to the element or you can say for that element which will be currently inspected or selected here like if you think that i'm typing here something and i will start getting for this label no it will not give this user email in the auto suggest it will give auto suggest for the currently inspected element because uh, like every element can have class 
ID or something. So then in that case, like it will be very confusing to show all the class and ID. So it will always, it always required in reference, like for which element we should show the values of attribute. So this is how you can write it here. Now, uh, another great feature in smart editor, like suppose we are, you are writing here XPath and suppose uh, you have written some XPath here and you want to uh, like write a new XPath. So you need not to save this value somewhere and then write new XPath. You can save it here in selectors of pro itself. Just click on this plus button and your value got saved here. Whenever next time, let's say now you have deleted this value. and you have written some new XPath, this one. But you want to access the previous written XPath. In that case, you click here and you see that the value is here, the previously written value. If you want to copy, you can copy this value. If you want to add it, you can add it this value. Like if when you will click on add it, it will go in this box. If you want to delete, you can delete here. If you want to save this new value, you click here and the value got saved, you can see it here. So this is how you can save the value which you are writing and you need not to copy and paste the, those values somewhere in the uh, like notepad or anywhere. So that's another great feature of selectors of that uh, you will not have to save those values. So that is the use of this plus button. Now suppose you want to use selectors of uh, like when you are typing here these values here. Okay and you don't want to see these auto drop down suggestion because sometimes you want to write by your own or you want to think by yourself in that case how you can stop these auto suggest you have this toggle here turn off this toggle and now if you will type here it will not show you those auto suggest so this is very helpful in case of like you want to take the interviews or something like in interviews, let's say you want to take the interview of someone and you doesn't want them to like see the value of uh, like these auto suggest and the these auto uh, generated values. In that case, you just turn off these both these toggle. So let's say you just want to use as a simple editor, simple plain editor. So in that case, you turn off both these toggle and you see now if you will type here, you will have to type everything manually. So this way it is very helpful if you want to use it uh, as a plain editor like you use DevTools control app. So now it is absolutely DevTools control app. It is not showing any value auto generated. It is not showing any auto suggest drop down. Cool. But this is very helpful when you are learning because when you type here, like let's say we are typing here. So you see that so many function it will show which you might not be aware like dot function then contains dot normalize space text normalize space starts with text last position so you will learn a lot of things that what all uh, permutation combinations are possible what functions are there in xpath so all these things you will learn from here so from that perspective selectors of smart editor is very helpful for you to learn all the new functions, all the functions available in XPath for any particular element in the DOM. So when you will type, you will not just save time, it will also help you in learning new functions in uh, new methods of XPath, new syntax. And you would be able to like write lot many types of XPath just for one element. Now suppose we are writing XPath for this element so there will be a many chance that you might make some mistakes you might miss some uh, let's say single code then in that case selectors of pro will help you to get that error so this will help you to get the proper error message like single code is missing it is telling you you can fix that if you want to learn more you want to explore more about xpath you want to play more around so let's say you type forward slash hit enter it will tell you that what is wrong in your xpath at tag name after forward slash so this will help you to learn all these things like if you will be making any mistake that it will tell you that what is possible what is not possible what wrong you are doing so all those kind of error message it will show you which will help you to learn each and everything like let's say this one if you miss in place of because many times normalize many people write a spelling like this se but here when you will write se this doesn't support expert doesn't support this one XPath support ZE. 
so wrong spelling use normalize in place of normalize so all these things you will learn from selector sub pro so this is very helpful uh, error handling feature of selector sub pro which will help you to learn lots of things cool so now so far we have seen the smart editor of selector sub pro how you can save the value the use case of these both these toggles and access x path now what is this aa button here so this is like this is very useful to generate the case insensitive x path so like you see that here it it is generating this x path here you see that u is capital e is capital right so if i if we click on this and here now you see that x path it is currently showing one matching node what if tomorrow someone make it like a small u and a small e so will it work no it will not work because now exact matching values are not there there is a capital u in the dom while this is a small u so how can we make it case insensitive many times we don't remember the exact uh, x path function of uh, of case insensitive because that is quite long function so in that case selector sub pro will help you just click on this button and it will convert your x path in case insensitive and now you hit enter it will show one element matching so this way you can convert your x path into case insensitive x path as well as it will also generate the x path automatically case insensitive as well as css selector so if you have written let's say this one this is css selector right now it, you see that capital i is here capital i is here you, in user id you want to generate with case insensitive you just click on this button and you see that it has generated case insensitive and if suppose you are you have written css selector this one where i is capital and we make it a small now it is showing zero you uh, you make it click on this and it will make case insensitive and hit enter it is making one element matching so this way you can generate the case insensitive i means you can convert the case insensitive uh, css selector normal css selector into case insensitive so this way this i is the in case insensitive function in css selector so this will help you here as well okay so now we have seen all these functions of this editor here on top great inspector we have seen it now we will see the attribute filter so we, i will explain one by one all these features now attribute filter so you see that currently it is generating with id okay but suppose if you don't want to generate with id in that case you click here and you have this feature that you uncheck this id box here and it will generate without id now it is generating with placeholder suppose you don't want with placeholder in that case you have this feature you can generate x path without a particular attribute so that attribute name you can pass it here and hit enter you see that now it is generating with without placeholder it is generating with title there could be a chance that in your framework you have some kind of like uh, attribute like qa id or data id so you always want to generate x path with those attributes in that case you can pass that attribute name here so this is like generating x path with attribute so here you can pass your attribute name let's say you want with name attribute okay or type attribute let's say you want with type so you can uh, here enter type hit enter now it will generate with type attribute. So you have these option in Selector Sub Pro where you can generate X path with a particular attribute. If you will not pass, let's say you haven't passed anything, you haven't chosen anything, then it will generate uh, with its own choice with a standard uh, preference. So very first preference is always given to ID. At any point of time, if you ever forget how to use this feature, you have this tutorial icon here. You can watch this. Now where this feature can be more more helpful so we have this question always that whether our x path is dynamic or static can we use it or not so in that case 
this feature is very helpful let me show you some of the elements where you will see that uh, your attribute seems like dynamic so how you can make sure that your x path is stable or not so here, so here let's open selector sub pro right click inspect click on here let me just close this okay so if you if we inspect any element let me inspect an element which has some dynamic which could be having some dynamic element so here you see that this google search button having class which looks like pretty much dynamic why dynamic because you see that it looks very random value alpha numeric value so in general whenever we will look any this kind of value we will feel that this is dynamic so in that case we want we don't want to use such values in our x path we will always never recommend we will never recommend basically to use such kind of values and if you hover here you see that there is an alert icon so it tells you that class looks dynamic use attribute filter to generate relative x path without class so i just showed you guys that if you don't want to generate this one with with class or with a particular attribute then in that case you have this shortcut so these are shortcut if you doesn't found those attribute name in these shortcuts then in that case you can pass it here like which without any particular attribute that pass that attribute name here or here so here we don't want to generate with class let's say so you can uncheck this it will generate without class okay so this is one way now what if we want to check if it if it is really dynamic if it is like really dynamic value of class is it really going to change so now you have this feature in selector sub pro this great innovation which will let you know that your x path this x path is really dynamic or not it will tell you that this is stable or not let's see how what you have to do just click on this button here and selector sub will verify and it will tell you that this is an stable x path or not so you see that it is telling you that this is a stable x path the value is not going to change so you can definitely change uh, use this x path in your automation script here class values are not dynamic on google search page now let me uh, try some other element which might be having some dynamic values so let's take this practice page only and let me inspect open selector sub pro so this value is again like class is having alphanumeric value let me refresh this page and see if it is dynamic or not so this is again stable now let me inspect some of the element here so this is here it is showing you let me refresh this page i mean click on that button and it will show you so here you see that it is telling you that this element is zero matching so it is unstable x bar and whenever like if it is that inside iframe so because now currently that element is not inspected so it will ask you to inspect that element and then you hit enter here in this x path if it is still matching so in this way you can verify that particular element that particular x path whether that is stable or not so this way you will get to know if your x path is stable or not okay so this is really cool feature that you will be getting to know that your x path or uh, CSS selector is one matching node or not if it is one matching node whether that is dynamic or not whether that is static or not Then uh, now okay, so we have seen the attribute filter feature and Dynamic X path how you can test if an X path which is generated that is static or not and you see that whatever settings you will be doing like you have turned on the attribute filter here so it will always be on that way if you want to hide that you can hide that so whatever setting you will do that they will be saved in your local great so now we have seen inspect attribute okay now this what is code so you see that here generating with uh, like normal x path css selector all those things it is generating what so but today if you copy this x path you will have to like you can copy this value 
you can go back to your editor if you are using uh, like anything whatever you are using IntelliJ or whatever VS Code anything so you will have to type this driver dot find element and then by dot x path right and then only you can paste this value and then you can die like whatever you want you can do that so here you see that you have to type this complete value can we get this complete command yes we can get that here you have this code click on this button and you see that now we are getting complete command you we need not to type that command as well so you will see that you simply click on this go back to your editor and paste it now here you want to add anything that you can add so simple it is of course your command could be different like let's say you are using page object model in that case your command is here you select this and hit enter you see that your uh, page object model command is ready here it could be something like you must be writing like this you must be very familiar by, by this command it will give that variable name properly for that element so if you are using cypress you can select this if you are using playwright you can use this if you are using selenium with python you can use this command so all those things you will get it here if your command is not there you can uh, like whatever your command could be you just in your command let's say abc dot something like that so wherever you have in your command x path like here you have something like in your command x path is written here so you have to replace that x path with x path value keyword and hit enter it will generate your thing and next time you will not have to set this command when you let's say you close this and next time when you open selector sub pro it will open with your command your command is saved in local cool feature yes okay now here you see that here we have to generate one by one like if you have to generate a locator page for all these head headers or we have to write automation script for all these header values or all these page values so we have to inspect one by one like you can use selectors of inspector and you can inspect this then copy this value then go back to editor paste this value then come back then inspect another element then you copy this value and then come back you paste it here no this is one by one we are doing can we get all these uh, like can we get command for all these elements in single sort yes we can there's a form page like this is a pa uh, locator page you can generate from here so click on this here you can set the command whatever it is like let's say driver dot find element command it is and now you ins start inspecting element here so let's say products pro plans courses practice page resources about email password company last name first name and we have inspected each and everything here and now you see that everything is generated you just have to click on this copy button go back to your editor and paste in single sort we have got all the commands ready no more time waste each and everything we got if you are look at, looking for locator page you select this hit enter you got the locator page command like complete locator page we got you just have to like uh, i mean so you can rearrange or if you want writing this way you can do it whatever format you use so you see that in single shot your locator page is also ready so this is very helpful very easy to uh, generate the locator page now if you are done you can just clo uh, close this to go back to the like home page of selector sub and then you can start normal way of inspecting elements or whatever you are doing is it is really simple really easy and when like your inspector is on so you can right click and it will disable it so that was like really cool feature then smart maintenance and don't worry like each and every feature for each and every feature you see that i have created a separate tutorial so at any point of time you miss that how to use this feature you will find the tutorial icon right there in selector sub pro window so you see that for form page there is a tutorial for code there is a tutorial here for filters if you click you will find tutorial here so each and everything tutorials is already there so you need not to worry that what if like tomorrow you forget that how to use this feature so you will not have to watch this whole uh, like long video of course for each feature i have created separate tutorial and link is attached right there
so don't worry about that this is like one time once you will start using it you will be habitual of that and uh, like it will be on your toe tip and very easy very straightforward to use all the features then we have this a smart maintenance feature suppose to today what happens like whenever there is a small change in the ui happened we have to verify x path one by one like for an example here suppose your ui got changed so you have to copy this x path then you verify one okay this is matching then you copy another x path paste it here okay this is matching then you copy another x path so this way you have to like copy and paste one by one and test like if it is matching or not right can we verify all the x path in single shot so that like whenever there is a ui change happen we get to know okay these all x path got changed so these these are the x path which we have to maintain yes that is possible so now what you have to do like let me just change this one so we will get some zero we will get some more x path matching notes so what you have to do you just copy your whole script you need not to segregate this you copy whole script go back to selectors hub let me delete this value click on this smart maintenance button here you see that there's an edit button click on this and here you paste your whole script and in the command box you have to pass that command what you have used in your framework let's say we have used this driver dot find element by dot express like this and click on submit you see all the x path has been fetched from your script and have been verified you see that it is showing this i knowingly changed this we changed so you see that one matching node or zero matching node so we can quickly fix that this x path and our script will be ready so this is how you can maintain your whole script if you want to delete any of those values, if you want to edit anything, you click on that edit button here. If you want to copy, you can copy that value. If you want, again, these value with the command, you can turn on this command feature here and you see that. So all those things, you will get it from here. Again, you got this, you click on this copy button, you can export, you can watch the tutorial, you can delete everything, all the features are there. So this is really cool feature that you can use the smart maintenance to verify your whole script all the x path in one go if you just want to verify let's say all these x path you have let me click on copy so just want to verify x path just delete this so you paste all the x path here and turn off this command whenever you have just x path and you want to verify so go to that page for on which you want to verify your x path so suppose we, we want to verify on this page and then paste it here submit it will verify all your x path so this way you can verify your x path and css uh, x path multiple x path in one go and once done you click back it will take you to the home page you start inspecting element to get those selectors value okay yeah great so we have seen all these features so far now you see that lot many values are here and you have to scroll down and you don't want to let's say you don't want to see this uh, like this toggle this toggle this anchor button and uh, like all these selectors there are too many selectors which is showing which are not useful for me on a day-to-day -day work i'm here just using xpath or css selector then why i'm seeing all these value i don't want right there like you want to customize always so here you have this customize ui click on this and whatever values you don't want to see that let's say we don't want to see those toggle left toggle right toggle case insensitive button we don't want to see we don't want to see this tag name absolute x path so you can uncheck these values so whatever value you doesn't want js path jquery test trigger path we don't want to see we don't want id so you can set the whatever value you want and then click on this you see now you have such a neat and clean ui of selector sub so whatever value you have selected now you see those only here okay when you will be verifying the x path here so you will see that uh, you will always see one ss selector which is a css selector suggested by selectors hub for your x path so in some cases let's say here you have inspected any element let's say this one and if you right click and copy this x path so suppose you have some of this kind of x path which are like really long x path 
like these and you want to convert them into css selector so how you can convert these xpath into css selector paste your xpath in selector sub and hit enter you see that it will uh, like it will generate it used to generate the uh, it will generate always generate xpath uh, sorry css selector for your xpath so uh, yeah let me just reopen this so if you have any xpath which you want to convert into css selector that xpath you paste it here and hit enter it will always suggest you a better css selector for your xpath so like this let's say you have this xpath so in that case you paste that xpath and it will show you this ss selector here okay now uh, let me tell you another one important feature of this selector sub there's a feature of a smart search in selector sub so suppose you have this x path here hit enter whenever it will be matching more than one matching element like it is matching nine nine elements matching so you see here nine elements matching now you want to generate x path or you want to see that first element matching or second element matching third element matching so you need not to uh, like traverse here in the dom or see you just start clicking on this arrow right arrow here so you see that it will automatically now it is showing you the x path for the third input box in this page so this is the x path for the third element matching in this box and other information also you will get it here so this way you can traverse to the whole page and it will show you that okay this x path is for this element and this is the uh, matching node that one so this is fourth one fifth one sixth one so likewise you can keep on checking keep on traversing so now you can traverse in the dom back and forward suppose i hit enter there are nine element matching here so it will show you all it used to show all the nine matching nodes here let's say i'm here and i know that this is google search button because it is highlighting in solid red line so if you click on this button it will generate the x path for that particular element automatically uh, this might sound a little difficult here because a lot many features you have learned so what i for this i have created a separate tutorial like advanced search in selector sub pro so that you can watch this is really helpful uh, feature when you are traversing a lot playing around with multiple elements so in that case this is really helpful okay now so uh, okay let's see the next feature so we have seen generating code and locator space smart maintenance to verify all the x path and then we have seen ss selector customize now let me show you this debugger button and what all these features are here so this debugger button how this can be helpful for us it is very helpful feature when you have the dynamic element which used to get disappear uh, immediately when you try to inspect them or you want to generate or write the selectors for them okay so let's say this uh, this button is there so if you try to right click and inspect this element men's t-shirt you see that this element is not visible here because that got disappeared immediately when you try to inspect that element like here let's say you want to uh, inspect this all here so you right click and click on inspect you see that we are not able to see in the DOM so one way selector sub has solved this problem by introducing the context menu feature itself on the context menu so you need not to even open selector sub pro in the dev tools you can right click and click on this selector sub pro you will find it here and you see that here copy relative x path copy relative css selectors so all those values you can directly copy from here context menu itself you just click on this value and value got copied for that x path this one if you want to copy for this one right click over here and you can copy this value so this way you can like right click and copy any value 
copy the x path from here itself okay now let us open the dev tools suppose we want to inspect that element because that is not solving our purpose we want to inspect that so here if we paste this value all right now it will show zero if you hover on this and then hit enter it will show one element matching because this is visible now but how can we see this value how can we inspect this element so to inspect this element you have this debugger feature in selector sub pro what you do you just click on this debugger and within five seconds make that element visible here now it will make this element visible here and you see that we will be able to inspect this element now so use selector sub us uh, use dev tools inspector to inspect this element here and you see that we are able to inspect and it is generating selectors whenever there will be debugger mode on you cannot use selectors of debugger uh, selectors of inspector because when debugger is on it used to execute it used to stop all the execution of javascript so for that reason you cannot use in that situation whenever debugger is on you will have to use dev tools inspector that is uh, perfectly fine and once you are done you can refresh the page then debugger will res resume you can also change the debugger start time like currently it is five seconds so within five seconds if you are not able to make that element visible in that case you can change the custom uh, this time as well from here from debugger start time you can change this five to zero or zero to one I mean, whatever let's say you want to keep it 10 seconds you can keep 10, 10 seconds if you want 5 seconds you can keep it 5 seconds so 5 seconds we thought like standard uh, anybody can make the element visible within 5 seconds yeah if it is like bubble loader kind of thing then you can make it 0 and immediately you want to start the debug debugger so in that case you can make it 0 I have created separate tutorial for this to learn more about debugger feature and more such dynamic elements like uh, this drop down the bubble loader and other stuff so that you will be really helpful so that's how you can use this debugger feature now here what is this uh, double quote here okay so let's go back to this page here and suppose we inspect email field so you see this right now it is generating with single quote It is generating with single code okay suppose we want to generate x path with double code because many frameworks are there which i mean some frameworks are there not many which supports x uh, double codes in x path like playwright i guess one and some of other pro, uh, frameworks as well some customized framework supports double code so in that case you need not to write the uh, you need not to manually edit this x path uh, by default you can generate automatically x path with double quote so you see that you just click on this button here and it will generate x path with double quote and css selector as well now if you inspect any value here it will generate x path with double quote and if there will be css selector that also it will generate with double quote so this way you can generate any x path any css selector with double quote if you want with single quote again click back so this is another great helpful feature okay now suppose uh, here you see that we have done a lot of settings and you at certain point of time you forget that what all settings you have done and you want to go back to the default uh, settings of selector sub pro so how you can go, uh, do that there is a reset config here reset settings click on this it will ask for your confirmation click on this and once you confirm it will take you to the default settings of selectors of pro so here you start inspecting element and you will see that all those selectors will be generating here and whatever was the default settings of selectors of pro it will show you here you see that you have to like when you inspect any element you have to scroll down to see all those selectors if you doesn't want to scroll let me just zoom out if you doesn't want to scroll down here each and every time you want all here up front click on this expand button it will show you all of them up front now you will not have to scroll down 
so you can see all of them you inspect any element you will see all the values in front of you you need not to scroll down whatever possible values will be there it will show you here itself now let's say uh, we keep it this way so we have seen all these buttons use case all these buttons here top buttons as well now suppose there uh, you are working with playwright framework and you want the playwright selectors as well so in that case you have a feature in selector sub pro that you can automatically generate the playwright selectors you need not to uh, like open the playwright window you need not to like in fact uh, go there in console and then generate playwright selector just go to customize ui there is a playwright selector button here you see so you just have to select this and of course like because again this is a heavy duty uh, some uh, lots of uh, algorithm is there behind this to generate the playwright selector so it used to take some time to generate that so that is the reason we have by default kept it off if you want to if you are working on playwright because uh, not everybody is right now on playwright so unnecessarily it is uh, no use to show the playwright selector for everyone so for that reason it is off if you are working on playwright you can turn on this checkbox and click on continue and now you will see that whenever you will inspect any element you will see the playwright selector as well so here you see that playwright selector you inspect any element and you will get this playwright selector if you want to verify this playwright selector you can directly verify in playwright uh, in selector sub pro itself you need not to run your code in a uh, debug mode of playwright window and then go to console then typing that playwright there and uh, sorry typing playwright and then pasting your playwright selector no you need not to waste that much time directly you can verify playwright selector in selector sub pro okay so that's how you can get the even playwright selectors as well and whenever you doesn't want uncheck this okay now very important features how we can handle the shadow dom iframe svg these different kinds of elements nothing extra you have to do it will automatically tell you each and everything so you just inspect the element so here in this page you see that this enter name field this is inside shadow dom so what you have to do you just inspect this element and you see that selector sub pro will automatically tell you that alert this element is inside shadow dom can't be located via xpath use css selector and here you see that this is css selector and it gives you the complete script so you need not to worry you just click on this copy button and paste it in your code so this way you can handle the shadow dom elements you just inspect the shadow dom element and selector sub will give you the script if you are working in selenium java it gives selenium java code if you are working let's say currently it is giving with java only for selenium because most of the people are on selenium java if you are using cypress then of course cypress with goes with javascript so you get the code for Cy cypress framework you see that you just have to add that method like if you are clicking on that or typing some value then in that case you can use that method but otherwise you got the code now you have the playwright code as well you just select this playwright and here you have two options java and javascript so you got the play, uh, code for playwright as well to handle shadow dom you can use this pw selector i have also created a tutorial for this to learn more about this feature so you can watch this tutorial to make the best use of uh, this feature where you can uh, like handle shadow dom nested shadow dom and uh, if you are using selenium play, playwright cypress everything suppose this element this enter pizza name is inside multiple shadow dom so it tells you that this element is inside two nested shadow dom and this is the playwright selector if it is selenium use like this it will give you the complete code for selenium as well if any element will be inside close shadow dom it will tell you that this element is inside close shadow dom so you will not have to any waste any time if any element is inside iframe you just inspect the element there is nothing special for selector sub you just inspect the element it will tell you that this element is inside iframe switch inside iframe through automation and this is the iframe x path and this is the selector for that inspected element if 
element is inside multiple iframe you inspect that element it will tell you that this element is inside two nested frame this is x path for frame one frame two and then this is x path for in inspected element so simple so easy no time waste of time then if there will be like any element will which will be inside uh, let's say element is inside shadow dom and that shadow dom is inside iframe in that case you inspect the element selector sub will tell you that this element is inside single shadow dom and that this shadow dom is inside this iframe so first you switch inside iframe and then this handle this shadow dom really good use cases and each and everything is handled by selector sub if any element is inside multiple shadow dom and that those shadow doms are inside iframe that also it will tell you like you see that this inside two nested shadow dom and these shadow doms are inside this iframe so everything it tells you so easy and so smooth if any element is svg this will tell you that this is svg element and it doesn't support a standard x path format so that you will learn and you will get these selectors for that if you will try to write like double power slash svg it will tell you that this is invalid x path invalid svg x path format so this helps you to learn as well so this is how you can handle different kinds of elements as well if any element any web element will be having extra special feature like this input is disabled inspect this element selector sub will tell you that input box is disabled enable to enter the value so you got to know that oh this is disabled element so you will be more careful before writing the automation script otherwise you will write the x path you will try to write the automation for this element and you will feel like okay this is uh, this will work but when you will run the script it will fail because element is disabled right now it will tell you like if any any element is comment or something this each and everything it will tell you it if any element like which is not possible then also it will tell you like if you inspect let's say uh, any element which is not automatable or any error will be there like any element which is not intractable then it will tell you that this is not intractable element like a style element sometimes some meta tags are there if you try to inspect those elements then it will let you know that this these are the element which are not uh, automatable so it will tell you that that as well like this telling you this element is not intractable through selenium automation as it is not visible in ui try any nearby element so all those things it will help you to learn suppose you are uh, writing some or you are doing some uh, web scraping kind of thing like let's say you want all the uh, links in a page let me turn off this for a second or let me just show you let's say you want all the links of a page double forward slash a forward slash at the rate href hit enter it will give you all the links here you see all 79 links and you can just simply click on this copy button and all these value you got or simply you can turn off this auto generator mode then you see all values you got if you want all the link text you just do the web scrapping this way so this is very helpful in web scrapping as well all features are really great in selector sub pro they will save a lot of time for you they will help you in lots of learning i hope like pretty much most of the features i have covered here and this will they will really help you these are footer links like if you haven't explored test case hub then please check out this uh, really great innovation test case of where you will find all kinds of test cases test scenarios for your testing which are written by whole community then test case studio this is another great uh, recorder plugin where you can record manual test cases steps to reproduce bug screenshots then video recording and lot lot more features are there here you can check out the uh, advanced course on xpath which is created by me uh, which will be very helpful for you to learn more about xpath css selector shadow dom etc more tutorials on selector sub is here you can please add review about selector sub pro how much you are feeling good and what all your thoughts are there how it is helping you in your day-to-day -day, uh, work you can let us know if you need any help you can connect, feel free to connect with me here anytime this is the bootcamp link which i used to keep posting live bootcamp so please join here you will find the change log of selector sub pro at any point of time you will just click here and it will show the change log 
on this page so you can anytime you can ch uh, see the change log what all change logs are here just click on this it will show you all the change log here and then more features and each and everything i used to keep listing here uh, mostly i used to create tutorials always for each and every feature so always uh, please subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss anything and uh, one last thing like suppose uh, how you if you want to change the password or if you want to change uh, uh, update the plan or you want to cancel or you want to see the ne next billing cycle everything so you just click on this profile let me close this here you see that profile click on this profile tab and you will see that here it is showing you that next subscription renewal date if you want to change the password you can change the password if you want to log out you can log out if you want to change the billing so you can see the billing here like what is your current plan what is your uh, like if you want to upgrade plan so you can upgrade the plan as well check out the plans here and if you want to cancel you can cancel plan from here but make sure if you are cancelling the plan the plan will immediately uh, like cancel and you would not be able to access the selector sub pro if you uh, cancel the plan so if you want to upgrade to the plan then first you of course you have to cancel and then you take the new plan so that's pretty much about selector sub pro i hope you enjoyed this and this is helping you and again i would request you if you are, if you have taken the uh, individual subscription then i will highly recommend you that you uh, ask your company to take the business plan and that will be like very cheap for them it is like just uh, nothing actually it's almost free one dollar for a company is nothing for per employee so that's almost very very cheap so please recommend i will highly recommend that you ask your company to take the subscription on selectors of pro and it will help you guys and your team to improve the productivity and everyone uh, can take the benefits of it and learn from this and help get help in their day to day work with that thank you thank you so much please like subscribe to the channel and let me know your thoughts in the comment section about selectors of pro thank you keep sharing keep learning